What's up, everybody? Thank you so much for coming back to my channel. I am your girl, Kairos Crystal, and I just want to take a second because I reached a milestone and say thank you, subscribers. I see y'all checking in. Your girl is in the three digits now. <laughs> it's very small in YouTube world, but very big in my eyes, and I give God all the glory. So I want to thank you for clicking on today's video. Listen, oh, today. This this one is, is going to hit home. You may see some tears. I don't know what's getting ready to happen. But I'm talking about grieving my singleness. Y'all, your girl was messed up. So I want to get into today's video. Y'all ready? Let's get into this. I'm bearing my soul today, y'all. So story time. This came up because I recently had a conversation with a sister friend of mine who shall remain nameless. And she was just talking about how the Lord is really dealing with her in preparation for marriage and for her husband and how she's noticing different things about her daily routine begin to change. And she said, you know, I wanna make sure that I have lived all of my single living because I don't want to get into my marriage and then end up grieving it, right? And so I was like, oh, oh, man, it hit so close to home. Let me tell you about this story. So I remember distinctively, you all, I remember maybe, I don't know, it had to be about a week or so after my proposal, or after my engagement from my husband, Quentin. Now, listen, y'all, we had been doing this like long distance thing and like phone chatting, like that's us right there. I have so many pictures of us being in like this two cell box, right? <laughs> because that was our life since we were long distance daters. And so I remember I was packing up after my engagement and I talked to one of my longtime friends and I was telling her that I was really, really excited. I was happy. I was joyful. I had finally gotten, you know, what I was believing God for. But if I was honest, there were some things that I was grieving. And so even though, you know, I had the ring, even though I made my little Facebook posts and even though I was like, oh my gosh, God is so good and giving God all the praise. If I be honest with myself, I was, I was grieving. And she just so happened to call me on a day that I was packing up my apartment. Now I had lived alone well over close to probably 15 years at this point, somewhere between, I don't know, 15 years is a good estimate on it. I had not returned back home to my parents' house. Like I was living on my own. So I had acquired my own sense of style and worked really hard to, you know, get the furniture that I wanted or the artwork that I wanted or, you know, paint my apartment, right? And put all of my art, right? up on the wall the way that I wanted it to be. So I'm packing up as I'm talking to my friend after the proposal and I was like, I'm really struggling. And this was no lie, y'all, like she can attest to it. I was struggling because there was one particular piece of art and I wanted to keep it. If I remember correctly, and see, I don't even remember now, but if I remember cor correctly, it was like one of those things you do like painting with a twist on like girls night or something. So it's like the high heel shoe or something super, super, super feminine, super amateur. Like it was literally a girls night out piece of artwork. And I said to her, I don't want to get rid of this. Like, I don't, I don't want to throw my stuff away. And she was like, Crystal. I was like, what? She was like, seriously? She was like, girl, get rid of that stuff. And I was like, no, like I want it. And so over the course of some weeks, I really struggled. Like every single day I started to wake up with this, this, this tightness that was like, I'm in a weird spot because I'm happy. I, I'm making a good choice. I love my husband. This is who I want to be with. Like, I, I want to be married. I've been complaining about being single. So 
but I want to save these things. I want to save these things for my singleness. And it's not like I could not have brought the art piece with me. I'm sure my husband wouldn't have cared. Like we have enough rooms in our home. I could have, you know, stashed it in my room. Like it, it wouldn't have mattered, right? But I knew that there were some things that I had to start giving up. And so it wasn't just about the artwork, but it was about giving up access to my friends. It was, about, and keep in mind, because me and my husband had a long distance relationship, one of us was moving and guess what it was? This one, <laughs> right? So I was okay with moving. I was, because I love adventure. I love to see something new. I was okay with all of that, but one day it just hit me like a sack of bricks. You're not going to be single anymore. You, you won't be able to do the things that you did in your singleness. And so I want to share with you some scriptures that the Lord gave me. And keep in mind, yes, this was after our engagement or after our proposal. But I believe as the Lord is bringing you closer to your kingdom spouse, your divine introduction of a husband, I believe that he will start to deal with you in some of these areas so that you don't go into your marriage wishing and hoping that you were single again. That's a whole other story. So let's get into some of these scriptures. Now, the first scripture that I want to share for you, share with you, is this one right here. Philippians chapter 3, verse 12 and 14 in the English Standard Version, okay? It says, not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining or pressing forward towards what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. And here in this scripture, this is, um, you know, talking about Paul's decision to, to be content. And if you go further along in these scriptures, it's really him laying it down saying, listen, I haven't made myself. I, I have not you know, come to the place where it's been, you know, my own doing or anything like that. But I am going to forget the former things. I'm going to forget everything that was comfortable for me. I'm going to forget everything that, here's a kicker, that I worked so hard to achieve. Not that it wasn't important, not that it would not carry over into my marriage, but there were some real, like, ideologies that I had in my mind about this is important to me. So I want to make sure I keep this. I want to make sure I keep that. I want to make sure I keep this and that. And not to even say that God will not allow you to keep it. But as you come into a marriage as an individual woman, and you're going to meet an individual man, and then the goal is for you two to become one. So no, you can't have everything the way that it used to be done, because that wouldn't be you two becoming one, right? So that was that was the first scripture. The second scripture that I want to share with you is found in Isaiah, I believe it is. Let's look at it. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so Isaiah, it says, do not remember the former things or ponder the things of the past. Listen carefully. I am about to do a new thing. Now it will spring forth. Will you not be aware of it? Can you not even comprehend it? And then it goes on. I will even put rivers. I'm sorry. I will even put a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. And so this scripture was very powerful for me because it was like, Crystal, you are trying to hold on to your old life. Here you are, you've prayed, you fasted, you've been, you know, God, when is it going to be my time? And God, I can't take it anymore. And you've done all of these things seemingly to want to get away from it or because you're so sick of it. And now God has answered your prayer in a most beautiful way. And you're like, but I want to, I, I want to hold on to... <laughs> you know, my old this and that, or my old schedule, my old routine and my old pictures. And it was like, Crystal, but I'm doing a new thing. Like 
you you don't have to hold on to that to that image anymore. You don't have to hold on to that safety net anymore. And a lot of times this is what was going on in me. Because I had lived alone for such a long time and remember this was during like the onset of the pandemic and the shutdown. So I had <laughs> honestly an attachment to things. I had an attachment to things. And those things brought me comfort. It brought me comfort to see the high heel shoe painting with a twist, you know, picture on my wall because that brought me back to a moment where I was lonely and my girls was like, hey, let's get up and let's go do something, right? I, I love that I could have pinks and purples and, and fuchsias all in my home because it brought me back to, you know, this idea of my femininity and who, you know, who I am, my softness and being girl-like and all of these things. And so it wasn't that there's something wrong with that, but my, our attachment can't be found in things. At a moment's notice, we ought to be able to, to give it up, to, to let it go, all for the glory of God. So the Lord had to show me like, Crystal, I'm doing something new. And then there was even that meme. I could not find it, you guys. But that image of it, it depicted God or Jesus having a huge surprise, like a huge teddy bear or something behind his back. And the little girl has like, you know, a little mini, cute little mini teddy bear. And she's like, God, I can't give it up. God, I don't want to let it go. And so the idea is you might as well let that go because what God has for you is so much bigger, so much better. Like you're going to throw that, that little thing out. Like you're not even going to be phased that you don't have it anymore. And I'll be honest with you, <laughs> that is happening to me. That's what prompted this video. I went to go look for something and I was like, oh, I gave that away. I gave that away, right? So. It's, it's bigger than just things because mine was in the idea or mine was wrapped up around things, but yours could be wrapped up around your routine or around your free time or around your body or around, you know, whatever it is that you honor or that you really, truly enjoy in your singleness, you might have to let it go. You might have to let it go in order to come into oneness with your spouse. And like I said, I don't want y'all to get the wrong, you know, idea that my husband was like, you can't bring nothing. Cause let me tell you, baby, I'm still unpacking boxes. I'm still <laughs> having boxes come from Michigan so that my home in Baton Rouge can, can be the home that I am familiar with. So there definitely is a balance to it. I don't want you to misinterpret what I'm saying. There's a balance to it, but then there are some things that just totally need it to be purged, right? And so here's what God continued to remind me. Crystal, your singleness has a purpose and, and you have fulfilled that purpose. You have walked in that purpose and it's not just to prepare you for marriage. So it's okay that I was expressive in, a, in my own person, my own woman. It's okay to have come into this sense of accomplishment with the things on my own. But now was the time for something different. Let me say that again. Now was the time for something different. Let me take you to this scripture over in Ecclesiastes, okay? Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes, y'all know that's a little tough to say sometimes. <laughs> Chapter three, now verses one through eight is what we know as the a time for, a time for. It keeps repeating itself, a time for this, a time for that, a time for this, a time for that. And so in the New Living Translation, I love how if the, the verse I want to focus on is verse six, but it starts with verse one. It says, for everything, everything, there is a season, a time for every activity under heaven. I believe in the maybe amplified version, I think it breaks it down and it says that there is an opportune time or that there is divine timing for everything under the sun, right? And then it goes into a time for this, a time for that, blah, 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 blah. So in verse six, it says that there is a time to search and a time to quit searching. <laughs> 
Now that's a message up yourself, but that's not what I want to focus on today. Child, I saw that in that version. I was like, yes, Lord. Okay, let me get back. A time to search and a time to quit searching. And then check this, y'all. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to keep and a time to throw away. This is important. This is important. There are going to be some things. I, I don't care if you have a long distance relationship and you have to move. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. When you come into oneness, when, when your goal is to marry another individual and do what the Bible says, which is, and they became one flesh, there's going to be a time to throw out. Now, the things that you have to throw out could be A to Z, right? Holy Spirit's going to deal with you on that because that's going to be something different for everybody. For me, it was pictures. Of course, I, I per for, for most of us, it's going to be, here's a tip, a practical one, right? Or a typical one, your clothes. You, you might not be able to take all them clothes, <laughs> okay? You might not be able to, you know, I don't care if, if y'all got your walk-in closets or whatever, or, or, you know, your collection, your exuberant amount of dot, 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 right? Mainly because it's just common courtesy, right? You, you don't just bring all your stuff and not leave room for your partner, hmm? Hmm? Okay, so whatever your list is, Holy Spirit will show you the things that you need to start getting rid of. I've always been generous. It's nothing for me to, to take a bag to the Goodwill, give this away. You can ask my friends. Like I've always been a generous person and, and willing to give stuff away. But this one was different. This one started to, to hurt me. Why? Because I had that attachment to some things in my singleness to some unresolved emotions and feelings that I didn't fully submit unto the Lord. So when Ecclesiastes says that there's gonna be a time to throw away, mark my words, the Lord is probably going to start doing that in your life, moments, days, months, weeks, years, before you are meeting your husband or preparing to be engaged or preparing to be married, all of those things. I remember I literally started posting stuff on Facebook and I don't like moving no way, y'all. But I was like, it's free. Come get it. <laughs> you, you want a toaster? Come get it. You, you want this China set? Come get it. You want this? Come get it. Come get it. Come get it. And then I started like finding other people to be a blessing to. There was another young couple in my apartment complex. And I said, she had actually, I think she had posted that they were in need of stuff. And I was like, girl, whatever, come shop. And that's what I did. I said, come in my apartment, whatever you want that is not like tagged with stuff that I'm already taking, you can have it. It's yours, like take it, right? And there was so much release in that. There was so much peace in that, if I'm honest, to know that that season was over. And here's the kicker. Here's the, the true thing. We hold on to stuff because we think we need it. Like I really admire people who are minimalist and, you know, tiny house living. More power to y'all. I can't do that. <laughs> I can't do that. And I I I admire that skill because like Paul says, you got to learn how to be content with nothing and then you and and content with a lot. What whatever your condition is, you are content. And the, the lesson that the Lord was getting ready to teach me or helping me to understand was, I don't need that anymore. I needed it in that season. That's why it was okay. It wasn't a sin to have those things or anything like that. It was necessary in that season to get me something or to whatever it did for me in that moment, right? But it will not be necessary in the next season. Ask me. No shade to my girls when we did our little paint with a twist, but ask me if I miss that stuff, right? Like, I, I don't miss it. I don't miss it. We, you know, I found new artwork and all of the things, right? So it is important that when the Bible says there's a time to let it go, start letting the stuff go. And you may be saying, well, 
you know, I'll let it go when it's time to move. No, 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 no. The Lord is trying to do something in your heart. If you feel led to, to have a garage sale this summer, let that stuff go, baby. Because trust me, God has something so much better in store for you. Okay. So let me just bring you to this last scripture here. And this is what God says. Every new season and transition, it requires a purging. It, re it requires you getting rid of something. So that's what I said. You're going to have to get rid of something, something. Now, it may be something physical or tangible, or it may be something spiritual, invisible, right? Invisible. <laughs> but you're going to have to get rid of something because th this is the biblical concept. In John chapter 15, let me pull up the scripture for you. John chapter 15, there it is. Verse number two in KJV, it says, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, what does he do? He purgeth, <laughs> he, he purges or prunes it, that it may bring forth more fruit. So listen, I don't, whatever your thing is, is going to be your thing. But because you're moving into a new season, because you're going to a new transition, right? Be because your time has now come, there is going to be something that needs to be purged, right? And instead of grieving and trying to hold on to it for, for comfort or because it did something for you in the past, you have to now realize that you are in a new place. Even before your wedding day, even before y'all sign those papers, you are in a new place. And whatever it was that brought you comfort before, you don't need it. You don't need it. It was good for that season, but it has no value, no purpose, no power, no strength, no nothing on this side. Sometimes that could be difficult for us to grasp. And I think, I think what's so who did it so beautifully. I don't think I put this scripture up, did I? I think who did it so beautifully was Ruth. There we go, in the book of Ruth. Ruth chapter one, verse 16 through 17 says, but Ruth said, do not urge me to leave you or to return from following you. Here's the part, for where you go, I will go. And where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, guess what? I'm going to die. <laughs> and there will I be buried. May the Lord do so to me. And more also, if anything but death parts me from you. Oh, Ruth. Oh, Ruth. Oh, Ruth. And mark my words, the moment that I started giving stuff up, the moment that I, I released that I that I would not be single anymore. That that I'm getting ready to even meet. Not only am I joining my life with this brother for till death do us part, but I'm getting ready to meet a new version of Crystal that I've never known before. I don't know this girl. I do not know her. I'm learning her, right? It, it's a part of who I am. So it's not that it's foreign. But I just have never known myself in this context. And so as I began to physically purge stuff and get rid of things, the Lord did something spiritually on the inside of me, right? I remember telling my husband while we were engaged, <laughs> I, I had spent some time with Jesus because I was like, Lord, you know. God, you know, Jesus, don't be having me out here looking crazy, Jesus, right? So I spent some time with the Lord and I was praying like about our lives merging together. And I was like, God, I want to be a part of a church. God, I want to, you know, live in this neighborhood. God, I want to, you know, do this with my husband. I had all these like expectations or all of these like hopefuls and wish list kind of items. And so the Lord said to me one time in prayer, he said, give me that. He said, give me that. He said, Crystal, you've trusted me to bring you to this space. You, you got to trust me with what you want or what you're hoping the next journey is going to look like. And so he politely said, give me that. And then the next thing he did 
was took me to that scripture in Ruth. He took me to that scripture in Ruth. And he says, this is what you're getting ready to enter into. And I was like, oh, uh, <laughs> I was like, oh, he said, yeah, he said, yeah, this, this, this is the type of covenant. This is the type of oneness that you need to make with your husband. And I was like, now let me, let me say this. Let me be very clear about this. When you become one, I remember my spiritual father, they talked with us through this in a premarital counseling. When you become one, that doesn't mean that everybody else is, becomes, you know, on the back burner. Now, yes, they will become lower in their ranking, so to speak, but doesn't mean that you forget about them or that y'all isolate yourself and just go live as newlyweds doing your own thing, not calling, not checking in, not let, you know what I mean? It doesn't mean that but you are going to have to work at becoming one. So I called my husband up, fiance at the time, and I said, I just wanna, yeah, like the Lord had dealt with me. <laughs> and I was like, I just wanna let you know that, you know, I'm doing this. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna join your church. I'm a, you know, I'm gonna do dot, 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 dot. And so I was so grateful to God because my husband was like, oh, yeah, no, I didn't think we would do that. Like you, you don't, you don't have to commit to that. So even in my obedience to start to give up something or to tell, to trust God with that area, he also answered, excuse me, my prayers and my desires as well. Right. And so I want that to be an encouragement to all of you, beautiful single women, whether you are engaged or dating or have no prospects in sight. Start now giving up the things that you don't want to take into your marriage. And then let me challenge you to give up something just for kicks, right? Low stakes, low hanging fruit. Get, get, give up something because it's going to make it easier in the long run for when it really is time to give it up and, and you can't retrieve it or go back or get, get it or anything like that. So that was the moment when I when I grieved my singleness. But I will tell y'all, I was a Girl Scout. I don't even remember the symbol anymore. Girl Scouts honor. I have not looked back. I I I mean, marriage has been. I'm I'm content. I I don't have a word to put there because all of the stuff I thought I was gonna lose, I didn't. I gained. I gained a lot. So um, leave me in the comments something that you feel like you would grieve or something that you feel like you would have a hard time letting go. I want to know. Or if you've already started to, to grieve your singleness and get rid of some old ways or some old things, leave it in the comments and let me know. All right, y'all. Remember, as always, you are blessed. You are beautiful. You are loved every single day. God has not forgotten about you. Till next time, I'll see y'all later.